Alright. That's why I'm Israel. Alright, getting straight into it. Um, next video. We got um only Israelites were given God's laws. <clears throat> God being Yahweh, obviously, but God actually being Allah Hayyim, Allah Hayyim in the Hebrew, meaning the powers. But that's another story. So only Israelites were given God's laws. Let's get straight into it. Psalms 147. Psalms 147, and I should have had this pulled up already, but it's all good. <clears throat> Going through the Spirit. It says, uh, so these, these, these are the scriptures to prove that only Israelites were given God's laws, the most highest laws, the highest laws. Uh, Psalms 149, verse 147, chapter 147, verse 19, it says, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. All right, one more time. It says, He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes unto his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So that's pretty, you know, cut clear. His word is showed unto Jacob. Who is Jacob? Those that are the stock of Jacob, the house of Jacob, which we're gonna um, we're gonna go into um, in the, in, the, in the first bulletin. But this is just to prove that only the Israelites were given the law. So um, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. <clears throat> Verse twenty, it says, "He had not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them." Praise ye the Lord. So, he hasn't even dealt with any other nation outside of the nation, uh, other than the nation of Israel. Period. It's been us from the beginning, it's, and it's going to be us in the end. And that's it. Uh, now, I could go into some other things, like, uh, you know, eventually the other nations will be able to worship the Most High, but. It will be through a middleman. Just like we have a middleman right now, being Yahweh Shah. You know? Um, but that's the getting into other things. So, he had not dealt so with any other nation in his judgments. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So, basically, this has been written. So, if they haven't known them, they technically still don't know them. They're just buying Bibles. You know, and they just picking picking them up, like the scripture uh, that says, uh, "What have ye to do to declare my my statutes?" You know, they have no business picking it up, picking it, pick, picking these scriptures up and declaring them, because they the most high he hasn't dealt with them. You know, they don't know the the first thing about you know uh, a statue or a judgment. All right, next next one, let's get it. Uh, Romans nine. Romans nine. I don't really be on this. I be <clears throat> in my physical. You know. Um, Romans nine three four. And so it says Romans nine three four. Further proving only Israelites were given God's laws. For I could wish, verse three. For I, for I could wish that my myself were a curse from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Verse four. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God and the prophets? Let's read that again. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ being the savior who people ignorantly call Jesus <clears throat> that's a Greek name he's a Hebrew um, <clears throat> you know you actually translate they actually translated it uh, Joshua that's his actual name and Joshua in the Hebrew is Yahweh so him and Joshua from Judges to Judge he, they have the same name um, 
So that's Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So we are brethren and kinsmen, period. Who are Israelites? Those brethren, this is Paul talking, his brethren and his kinsmen are Israelites. So my brethren and my kinsmen are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption? So the adoption pertains to the Israelites and the glory. So the glory pertains to the Israelites and the covenants. So the covenant pertains, the covenants pertains to the Israelites and, and the giving of the law pertains to only the Israelites and the service of God pertains only to the Israelites. So we the only ones that could, you know, be the priests and um, <clears throat> hold the, the, the services and and then yield, um, even though we wouldn't deal with that anymore, but the tabernacle, anything like that, we the only one, we, we are his anointed. And the cert and the promises. So there you, there you have it, that's pretty clear cut. So you got um, Psalms 147, 19 through 20, and Romans 3, 4. Romans chapter nine, uh, verses three through four. So the only Israelites were given the laws. And it's pretty much scriptures to, to, to cut right through anybody that say otherwise. And we have not been dealt, dealt off. Let's go prove that real quick. <clears throat> Let's take a little detour. In Jeremiah, was it chapter, let me get it in this one real quick. Jeremiah. I believe it's 33. No, it's 34. That's what it should be. Excuse my servant, the prophet. <clears throat> this is going to be another one we're going to use. 35, 15. Uh, there's one more I want to get, but it might not be needed. It's one of my favorite verses. Let me see something. Yeah, we're going to save that one. Yeah, we're going to save that one. We're going to save that one. So it's a lot. Let's stay on track. So let's get to repentance and forgiveness of sins as for Israel, Israel only. Let's get to that. All right, so that's Acts 5, chapter 5, verse 31. All right, we're going to make this video quick. We're not even going to spend time with these <coughs> gang sayers. <coughs> it says, chapter 5, verse 31. Him hath God exalted, Him that him being the Savior, the Messiah, Mashiach, um, uh, Mashiach, some brothers like to uh, pronounce it, Yahawasha, as we said, who the world, the world, ignorant, this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, um, him hath God, the Most High, exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Him, again, him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So that's just that clear cut right there. And we're going to add one more to this. We're going to get Jeremiah 35 verse 15. This is another one. This is another one. Jeremiah 35 and 15. I'll throw this in real quick. It says, I have sent unto you that you being Israelites, all my servants. You know who those servants are. 
We just read that in Romans 9, 9, chapter 9, verse 3, uh, verses 3 through 4. He's my servants, the prophets. He said, so he sent them to the Israelites. Those prophets were only sent to the Israelites, rising up early and sending them. He sent them early because that's what a prophet does. That's what prophecy is. You know, it's foretelling future. Um, return ye now every man from his evil way and amend your doings and go not after other gods. So he was telling, this kind of goes into both. This goes into the, um, the Romans 9 proving once again that the service only pertained to, because you know prophet, the prophets were only Israelites. They were never of another nation. They were only Israelites. <clears throat> That's the nation of most. So you haven't even dealt with anybody else. You know? Now you can get technical. You know, the father, he uses, he can use heathens. You know, like he used, uh, he used Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, he used a few heathen kings, you know, to do his, do his bidding or whatever. Uh, not bidding, but his, 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 his will, you know, at that moment. Um, so this goes into that, and it also goes into, as it says, after the, the comma, return ye now every man from his evil way and amend your doings. <clears throat> so that goes into the future thing that was coming, which was Yahweh Shah coming, you know, the Savior. Uh, you know, as it said, he... Uh, he raised him up to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel, you know, for, for forgiveness of sins. That's that right there. Return ye now, every man, who is he talking to? The Israelites, you know. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now, every man, from his evil way, and amend your doings. Because that's what they was calling the Messiah. They was calling him a prophet, you know, because he was coming to speak the words of the Most High. And go not after, even though he was the son of he was the son of God. And go not after. He is the son of God. And go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear nor hearken to me. So, hey, that just goes that, that goes that goes into it. You know, uh, let's get. Let's go into the next one. The Messiah or Christ, we just proved, proved that already, but we're going to get it, came for Israelites only. These are the, these should be the no-brainers, <clears throat> you know, when it comes to the scriptures, but somehow people seem to read over these. But this is simply what you need to know. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, proving that the Messiah, or Christ, uh, came for Israelites. And this is Jesus Greek terms, but it's fine. It says, uh, Go, did these twelve, Jesus, who is Yahweh, sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. So he said, don't even go into the way of the Gentiles. He's, he's talking about the natural Gentiles. How we know that? Because one, the Most High is not the author of confusion. And we and, and we know the reason why I say the Most High, because what did he continue to tell everybody he was speaking? He came to do. He came to do the Father's will and his Father's work. So these are the Father's words. He told, he who said, don't go, go not into the way of the Gentiles. These are the natural Gentiles. And what I'm going into is to say we know they were the natural ones because <clears throat> they went to where the Israelites were scattered at. And we're gonna get we gonna that's for another video. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. <clears throat> so we're gonna get into that in the next video. It says, uh, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's where you go rather. That's what the focus is. Period. Let's move on. 10, uh, 15, I could have just stayed in the book, let's say 15, 21, let's start at 21, straight to it, it says, then Jesus, who is Yahweh, went thence 
and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. Now why was he doing that? Because she wasn't a part of the rather. That rather? But he said, but he answered and said, I am sent I am not sent but unto the, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the dogs. Now meat means nutrient. It's not beneficial. That's what he's basically saying. It's not it's not it's not gonna be nutritional. You're not gonna we're not gonna get anything out of this. So, so to start back over, he said, but he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. So if you look up um, heathens, it literally means, uh, you can look it up on Blue Letter, uh, Blue Letter Bible. It literally means a pack of uh, dogs. That's what a heathen is, you know. Um, he said, it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. So we are the other nation's masters. But that's neither that's 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 that is he that's that is here and there. So um yeah. But what we actually proven is just um that he didn't come he just he only came for the house of Israel, period. That's really what the focus is. But this just shows how serious it was, you know, this conversation is showing you. It says, uh, then, um, we don't even have to get that, but I'll read it anyway. Then Jesus, Yahweh shot, uh, answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now, some people read that and get confused, but didn't we just talk about earlier that the Most High uses heathens as well so the heathens they are his creation as well they just not his children all right so but we'll say that for another video we're going to clear all that up um and that's pretty much it he departed and jesus yahweh yahweh departed from this and came not into the sea of galilee galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there that's pretty much it <clears throat> let's get the uh, let's get this because he said he's not sent but to the but he said let's get this this is gonna prove uh the when he was talking about it in matthew 10 when he told the disciples go rather to the lost sheep because people okay he said that but i guess they don't feel like he said it enough oh really matthew chapter 11 chapter 18 verse 11 for the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost, which was lost. So there you go. And then we was clearly lost before Yahweh Shah got here, and we just proved that in the Jeremiah 35, 15. I have sent also unto you my servants, the prophets, rising up. So he, this was the Father talking to us uh, about past tense when he was sending us prophets. I have sent unto you also my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return, return ye now, every man from his evil way. So our people was we physically end up becoming scattered and but we were already mentally scattered because we were trying to be like the nations that were surrounding us. So how do we know that? Because he told us to return. So we have to go away. It's just really that simple. Now thus being lost. He was basically he was basically astray. You know? And then you can read it in verse 12. How think ye if, if a blind man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray? Doth he not leave the ninety-nine and go up into the mountains and seek it that which is gone astray? So that goes into, in the beginning when they were talking about how, uh, if you're familiar with it, they were saying, they was uh, trying to rebuke Yahweh Shah because he sat on the eight Republicans and sinners. But he said, you know, doctors, uh, physicians, they, you know, they only, they, they, they only heal the sick, you know. So that, that's, that's more understanding on 
why he went into detail. Basically, he was saying those other sheep, uh, same understanding. They were they're not sick, so we're really only here to deal with the ones that have problems. Lost, sick. If you lost, you basically sick. So it's all the same thing. So, uh, yeah. And let's get this last one, and that'll be it. John. This is John. Um, here we go. John 17, 9. All right. <clears throat> We're going to wrap it up with this. It says, um, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou has given me, for they are dying. Now, this is when Yahweh was about to uh, sacrifice himself. Uh, he would have to be sacrificed for the nation to be the ultimate sacrifice so we can get eternal life, to receive, receive the powers, you know, we could be received the adoption back, you know, and uh, keep the glory or whatever. So, uh, just to give you context if you don't know. Ten, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Once again, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and thine are, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So, he don't pray for the world. You got many worlds, and right now, we we have our the Israel. You have the Israelite world within the world within the world that has to be destroyed. And we could prove that. So we're not, he don't pray for the world. He prayed for specifically them that he has given them, which is, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am sent to save that which is lost. I am not sent but to the all sheep of the house of Israel. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, we can kind of prove this world thing, but I don't think we necessarily need to. Um, proving that it's two worlds. You know what? We're going to prove it. Let's go get it real quick. Isaiah, prove all things. Isaiah 45 and 17. And there's plenty more proving this one, too. I might get both of them. I got this spirit going. 17. Oh, no, I didn't even put it together. But it's all right. We'll get this one. It says, um, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with that everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. You know, you hear, you probably hear a lot of brothers bring that out. I got other ones that you can bring out for this one as well, too. But it's pretty much this simple right here. You know, so there's many different worlds. How do we know that? Because this world is 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 is, is, is prophesied in, in this in the same book. So that would be a contradiction right there. So it's two worlds. You got the Israelite literal own world. It's like everybody's not into this truth. They're into that out there. That's a whole nother world. That is the world. But we are actually the world, but we are the Israelite world right now within the this world this world so which is uh prophesied to be destroyed so yeah only israelites were given god's laws repentance and forgiveness of sins is for israel only the messiah or christ came for israelites only and now we have it so with that i'm gonna say shalom till next time brothers and sisters shalom